Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Kaya Limited Q1 FY25 earnings conference call hosted by Dollar Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now end the conference over to Mr. Sachin Bobade from Dollar Capital. Thank you and over to you sir. Thank you Aditya. On behalf of Dollar Capital, I welcome you all to the Q1 FY25 earnings conference call of Kaya Limited. Hope you all and your family members are staying safe and healthy. Uh, from the management side, we have with us Mr. Rajiv Suri, Global Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Rajiv Nayar, Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Aryan Dhariwal Chief Financial Officer. Now I hand the floor to the management for their opening remarks, and then we would have question and answer session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. I would like to welcome you to the conference call on the company's behalf. The investor presentation has been updated on our website, Kaya.in, and contains the financial, key metrics, and business updates. I hope you have had a chance to go through it. Let me begin the conference call with highlights of quarter one performance, starting with Kaya India performance. The clinic business registered a 8% revenue growth over Q1 FY24. Product business at clinics registered a revenue growth of 8% over Q124, mainly driven by categories like hair care, body care, skin care, and sun care. Services business registered a revenue from operations growth of 8%, mainly driven by categories like body contouring, acne, hair care, and beauty facial. Our body contouring segment continued to show robust growth of 25% over quarter 124. Hair care was relaunched with advanced diagnostic tools focused on hair growth and hair fall in quarter 1 with a completely new customer journey and witnessed a 14% revenue growth for quarter 1. Customer count grew by 3% over quarter 1 24, aided by additional customer counts through omni-channel route. NPS scores continue to trend higher, touching 88, reflecting consistent, great customer experience. A quick update on other initiatives. As you may be aware, we started the brand refresh campaign and program uh, last year, which comprised of three components, which is relocations, renovations, and updating our service technology. To give an update on the three components uh, on relocations as part of the continued clinic refresh initiative, we relocated three clinics in quarter one. These clinics are in Kochi, Jaipur and Hyderabad and enjoying positive customer sentiment as captured in the GBP of the clinics with a rating of 4.2, 4.8, and 4.7 star rating, respectively. A total of nine clinics have been relocated since the start of the brand refresh program in FY24. On renovations, three clinics were renovated in quarter one 25, making it 14, relo 14 renovations from the start of FY24. On service technology, to uplift customer experience and outcome, we invested in 38 new dermatology machines, including in anti-aging, acne, body, and laser hair reduction in quarter one. The company, as we are aware, is a leader in innovation, and I will give a short update on that. Uh, on the AI app, our proprietary AI tool is being used successfully by Kaya's expert dermats in clinics for consultative skin services. 
AI powered dermat consultation contributed to 19% of anti aging, acne, and brightening and pigmentation collection. New product development contributed to 5% of Kaya India clinic collections. New service development contributed to 4% of Kaya India collections. And use of marketing automation, which included WhatsApp bot and web bot to our customer base, helped us improve the customer funnel. Our Kaya Smiles loyalty program grows from strength to strength, and it contributed to more than 90% of Kaya Clinic's collection in quarter one. We focus on experiential for our Kaya Smiles Platinum and Kaya Smiles Gold Elite Base by giving free facials, which helped us with the collection growth and increase the footfall to the clinic. In quarter one, 25, the loyalty program grew by 12% in collection. On the people front in quarter one, Kaya was honored with the prestigious Tribe Award by the Indian Business Council. This year, we have been recognized for an outstanding L&D initiative, which is customer-centric selling. An update on collaboration with Marico. Earlier this month, the company announced that it will collaborate with Marico. Under this arrangement, Marico will have exclusive rights to scale up Kaya's range of efficacy-based products outside of Kaya Clinic, thereby accelerating the product growth and the brand visibility for Kaya, which will in turn lead to increased footfall for the Kaya Clinic. Now going on to the Middle East business, sale of the Kaya Middle East FZD and its subsidiaries has been completed on 6th of June. And accordingly, Kaya Middle East FZD and its subsidiaries has been classified as discontinued operations in the quarter ending 30th June 24. The group has recognized 108 crores as profit from discontinued operations in the consolidated financial results during the quarter ended 30th June 24. Update on rights issue. The rights issue process can be started after the completion of Kaya DMCC sale, which is pending subject to authorities approval. On the financial performance, revenue from operations at a standalone level is at 52 crores for quarter one, 25, a growth of 5% over corresponding quarter, 24. Standalone profit after tax and other comprehensive income for quarter 125 was at INR 6.4 crores after considering one time gain of INR 6.2 crores for reversal of impairment on the investment and INR 9.5 crores for sale of trademark as compared to loss of 4.5 crores over corresponding quarter 124. The detailed financial information update is already with you in the uploaded investor presentation and you may refer to that for additional information on the performance. I now open the session for questions and my colleagues and I will be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of 
Bharat from Money Bee Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, hi. Congratulations for the great set of set of numbers. Uh, so my question was on the tie-up agreement with the Marico. So can you just clarify on what kind of agreement do you have? Do you have to pay them royalty, or is that like a revenue share or something? So we will be receiving uh, royalty um, from Marico on sale of uh, products of Kaya branded. Uh, but the main purpose of uh, this, besides royalty, is the uh, growth on of products which marico can do because they are strong at uh, channels outside our clinics which include yeah. e-commerce gt mt and therefore uh, they will be investing also in uh, marketing the products in a big way and we believe this will increase increase the brand salience and in turn also improve the footfall in the clinics okay so uh, could you just uh, you know clarify a little bit more on how much the royalty would be if you would be able to disclose it yeah so the terms uh, of the uh, collaboration remain confidential and we cannot speak uh, in public about it okay. uh, as you would imagine but uh, but to say that you know the growth will be there uh, the agreement is commencing on uh, in september so next month and uh, we are going through a bit of a transition right now and uh, we should start to be able to share some information uh, once it starts okay okay so uh, my another question was uh, in the in one of the previous calls you were saying that the indian clinic business the abitabur clinic was around 28% so i just want to know was that uh, excluding and saying the corporate cost so i just wanted to know if that includes the rent cost or was it pre rent cost Includes the rent cost, okay, and, and okay. includes the corporate cost. And uh, quarter one last year it was twenty five percent, and quarter two this year is twenty seven percent. And quarter one this year is twenty seven percent. Okay. Okay. So uh, hello, sir. Sorry to interrupt. Do you have a yeah. follow up question? Please get back to the queue as several participants are waiting for their chance. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just have one question. Can I can I go ahead? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I just want to know. So what what is how do you see FY twenty five? So how many more relocations and renovations or uh, new clinics are you planning to open? And what will be the capex for you know each of them? If it's a relocation or renovation or a new clinic that you're planning to open, and how much is the break? How much? How many months does it take to break even in a new clinic? so we are planning to open around 6 to 8 clinics in this financial year uh, when we talk about the capex per clinic is around 1.8 to 2 crores and when we do a relocation the capex is around 0.6 crores to 0.7 crores around 60 70 lakhs per clinic with respect to the break even clinics break even it generally take us around 12 to 15 months to break even break even a clinic okay okay yeah uh, thank you that's it from my side thank you Our next question is from the line of Pratik Giri from Shubla Research. Uh, Mr. Shubhi, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you are. Yes, okay. Yeah, uh, Mr. Shubhi, thank you for taking my question. Uh, uh, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, Mr. Shubhi, if we look at our ad spend uh, in last four years, three to four years. Uh, it has not gone up materially. You know, from nine crore to eleven crore, uh, we have spent. whereas our revenues have gone up from 90 crore to 180 crore uh, though i understand there is some uh, post covid demand in play so on this context uh, mr suri i have two questions you know first so how should we read into this does it mean that this much of ad spend is enough to drive growth uh, in the existing 74 stores and uh, how do you see it going forward uh, you know how many more clinics we can open further without uh, significantly increasing the ad spend uh, that's my first question mr suri But also, this one ninety two. Yeah, should I? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So marketing spend wise, we actually maintain a ratio which is quite standard to net revenue, 
in the range of about seven to eight percent of net revenue. That's the that's the standard average that we keep for marketing spends. Um, yeah, and in terms of growth uh, factors, I think the growth factors, as you saw last year, the net revenue growth was about twenty percent, and this year we hope to maintain a similar trajectory, uh, but uh, the spends will remain seven percent as part of net revenue. Okay, uh, is this Arjun? No, this was Rajiv. Rajiv, yeah. Rajiv Nair. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Mr. Nair, so that's what my question is. Actually, uh, you know, last four years, if we see from 90 crore revenue to 180 crore revenue, correct? But if you look at our ad spends, it, it has nearly in the similar region of 9 to 10 uh, crore per year. So, I mean, uh, I just wanted to get your sense on this. Uh, is it going to be uh, stagnant for some more time? Uh, in the meanwhile, we open more stores or, you know, we can, I mean, how, how should we read into this? So, Pati, when are you referring to 90 crores to 180 crores, what are you exactly referring to? Because the market expense has always been around 7 to 8% of our revenue, and the growth factors for us on year on year basis were the new introduction of new categories like body contouring, hair care, and expansion, and something from the relocation renovation. Actually, okay. clinic okay. collections uh, last year to uh, to this year in terms of uh, the like for like clinics was roughly Around about seven percent. So it is not uh, ninety to one eighty. So it's, if you could just I clarify, I hope you're not referring anything to pre COVID. Uh, so, uh, Mr. if I'm not wrong, probably a March uh, twenty one revenue was around ninety one crore, and exactly. March twenty four revenue was one seventy six crore. Yeah, I think that's the COVID impact of that particular period. A lot of we are now starting to compare like for like to previous year. Uh, at that particular point, it was uh, post-COVID, so we were just tracking uh, pre-COVID to post-COVID numbers. So I think that's the reason for the 91 crores. I think we should not take the COVID period, you know, everything was out of... Uh, a lot of things were okay. closed during that period. Okay. Okay. So that's that so, understood, understood. So fair point. Uh, so going ahead, uh, we should see a proportionate increase in marketing spends uh, as we increase uh, you know, our revenue and the store count as well. Absolutely. Got it. Got it. Uh, Mr. Suri, I have a second question. You know, I just wanted to get your opinion on our ATS and footfall. You know, I understand we operate in a high ATS category, uh, which has probably, you know, which is probably giving us 1,900 customers per clinic per year, uh, which means around uh, uh, you know, 150 customers uh, per clinic in a month. So I just wanted to get your sense on, you know, entering lower price services. Uh, can that help us bring, you know, incremental revenues and profits in turn you know, at corporate level? So we, uh, what uh, your source of numbers is probably to, related to, you know, the collection and the transactions we make. Uh, in addition to that, we also have uh, services and multiple services uh, in, in the in the in the clinics, and we do roughly about 50,000 uh, sessions. Uh, which, uh, if you look at it uh, divided by 75, gives another 666 uh, sessions uh, per uh, per clinic per month. Yeah. Per month. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So that times 12 is about 7,000 uh, more. So I think the number of customers who actually come to our clinic, in addition to the ones which you are talking about who are purchasing, are also multiple coming back uh, for the session which they are taking. And from the session which they are taking, we have a BTC which is a bill to uh, convert of about 40 to 41 percent, 47 47 percent. So you see that we are also uh, getting, uh, uh, let's say, uh, sales uh, from that. So it's a combination of both. And we can take okay. you through this uh, offline. We also discussed it with you yesterday. Uh, yesterday, yeah, yesterday, and then if you want, we can have a more detailed discussion offline. Understood, sir. sir. Understood. Uh, that's it from my side. Uh, uh, good luck uh, to the entire team. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ishit Shet from Envil. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for taking my question. So a couple of questions. Uh, one is that um, on the deal that we've done with Marico, 
how is it different than the old deal that we had done with them because again i am hearing that uh, you know we will get a part of uh, you know the revenues that marico does from kaya products as a part of royalty so how is it different from the old one and marico in the press release yesterday had says that uh, you know they are targeting about 100 crores of sales in the next 4 years or so so is there any ballpark number that we have and how does kaya stand to benefit from uh, this deal so look between last time and uh, this time i think the main difference is there is no overlap in channel uh, because last time we were also selling on ecom they were selling on ecommerce we were selling in gtmt they were selling in gtmt so the lessons from the previous time have been taken into account this time and they've got exclusive right for e-commerce so gtmt so it's a clean uh, uh, strategy where they will be able to execute uh, and kaya brand will be represented by one company rather than two companies so i think that was a big change from last time to this time besides that they've got several uh, you know e-commerce now d2c brands and of course they're famous in the other uh, distribution channels so uh, you have seen from their press release uh, the target uh, which they are they expect and that's what we are also expecting the similar number and then we will get a royalty on uh, on, on on the number yeah so if i if i understood this correctly uh, we've given them exclusive rights for the channels that they will be selling it through right yes. now yes, yes. the second question will be is there uh, because like say for example in e-commerce or even in now uh, gtmt we've seen discounts happening uh, for a lot of products right so is there some kind of cannibalization that happens from clinic level product sales to uh, you know the sales which happen through distribution channels so instead of us getting the full revenue we only get a part of the revenue as royalty because maybe that product is cheaper by 10% 15% at uh, you know through the marico channel so See, as far as uh, the um, uh, customers are concerned, uh, you know they are coming to the Kaya business mainly for service. Right. Fourteen percent of our sales are uh, product uh, from that, and uh, a, a high majority of them are uh, high price premium products, which are thousand rupees and above. Right. And uh, therefore, we believe the cannibalization, if there is any, would be minimal, uh, and we are expecting, uh, not expecting any. Uh, of that we are continuing to focus on high price items you know we have a range which goes up to 3000 rupees and uh, we believe that the cannibalization if there is uh, would be minimal but uh, and also noting that you know all the products they sell will have a qr code uh, uh, on them which will bring the customers back on the kaya website and therefore we will be able to get lead generation and from the lead generation uh, additional footfall Uh, into our clinics and i think that's really the game uh, which we are doing is how do we increase footfall into the clinics and secondly the investment they will make in marketing will increase the brand salience of uh, kaya as a whole and that should again help us uh, getting more inorganic uh, traffic uh, to our uh, website as well as uh, footfall so net net we believe that uh, it is a win win for both the companies and right Yeah no I get that point my only point is that for us for Kaya uh, the only uh, question that I have is that say if we are at say 14% of sales so we are at say close to whatever 25 28 crores uh, kind of number of product sales that 28 crores and if say Marico does 100 assuming that the royalty is capped at 5 6% generally for all indian companies so then incrementally we get only 5 crores out of that 100 crore sale but you are saying the benefits of the footfall increased brand salience and all of that accrue to us in the form of higher clinic level uh, you know footfalls yes 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 and i think that's where we are because you know for every transaction which comes to the clinic and conversion our average transaction is roughly about 17 18000 And Correct. the new customer for us is twenty-two thousand. So you can imagine the benefit that would have on the footfall because everyone, every new customer on an average is twenty-two thousand uh, transaction, uh, sure. average transaction value. Yeah. No, I get that. And uh, so, second question is, uh, uh, I think uh, for even for our India business, now that India is now the you know bread and butter for us now. uh what how do we see uh, you know revenues moving up over here because i mean it's been more than uh, 
eight years where we've seen the revenues being more or less stagnant for us. Uh, so do you have some sense on, you know, how do you see, because now the entire focus and the bandwidth of the entire management and the team will be to grow India business, right? That's where uh, everything will be. So do you have, uh, you know, I mean, do you sense how we can grow this? Because say if we do five, six uh, clinics every year, assuming this year is the start and we continue to build on that, it's basically uh, anywhere between 7-8% growth that can come because of new clinics and SSG growth has to be at least 8-10% for us to substantially see the benefits of uh, economies of scale. So do you anticipate something of that sort? So we can't really uh, give a number uh, in public forum in terms of uh, how much percentage we expect uh, but I think that uh, the strategy of a combination of uh, like for like growth plus expansion, hmm. plus relocation. Remember the relocation also, the growth there is always double digit. Right. Uh, will help us uh, to grow to the levels which eventually will lead to profitability. Got it. Okay, sir. So, and last question, if I may, uh, just, this is more on, uh, you know, the financials. Uh, what is the net debt that we have currently, uh, you know, post the completion of the transaction of Kaya Middle East? So the net debt is 143.72 crores and it is fully from the directors. That 143.72. So just before this transaction, we were at about 185 crores. Is that correct? 193 because there was a loan from Kotak in Middle East, which has now been squared off. So, so 50 crores is the net debt reduction that we've done uh, after this transaction. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, thank you so much. I'll come back. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question is from the line was Shwet Jen from Whitestone Financial Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. So most of my questions have been asked by previous participants. I just have two questions. Uh, one is I wanted to understand, you know, under body contouring, what typically services come under that? And, you know, we had also mentioned somewhere in the annual report that, that body business will be a key pillar for us, you know. So just wanted to understand if you could share some insights about this, you know, how big is the market opportunity for us and what kind of uh, revenue we are looking from this segment, say, two or three years down the line, you know, especially now when we are just focusing only on India. Yeah. I think uh, in terms of body contouring the services, the first question that you raised was uh, was uh, services tuned towards uh, shaping the body. So cool sculpting uh, being the key uh, product line that we have, actually the service that we have, contributes to almost 80% of our revenues going forward as well. Uh, we also have a key muscle toning uh, service, which is a product called CM Slim. And the third one is uh, tightening of skin, which is post contouring tightening of skin, which we use a product called Venus Legacy. We'll also try and build in some amount of nutrition consulting into this uh, service as well, so that the people who take these services also maintain a dietary restriction. Uh, I think that's something that we'll be doing as part of the overall uh, service uh, for uh, body contouring. Um, and as far as growth is concerned, I think we've seen, uh, you know, consistent growth in this category over the last two years. Last year, I think we added about 13.5 crores worth of additional revenue in the category. And this year also on last year's number, we have grown by almost 33% in the category. So I think uh, we do expect this momentum to continue because the other services besides school sculpting, which I mentioned, muscle toning and skin tightening, are relatively low price services and are likely to scale up much faster. So we are also adding some machines in this financial year um, at a faster scale. We also have body composition analysis through a product called InBody inside the clinic, uh, which also gives us full visibility in terms of the, the, uh, the uh, customer's body composition and that helps the doctor give better consultation to the customer. So I think that's the broad gamut of what we're planning to do in body contouring. And so my second question is just related to the competition, you know. So just wanted to understand, you know, uh, what typically is our edge uh, over other, uh, you know, uh, uh, well-known uh, clinics such as, you know, uh, like if, if you just talk about Mumbai, it's, it's uh, the Ageless Clinic and Jamna Pai kind of, uh, you know, set up and, you know, other saloons also have started offering these kind of services. So what really, uh, you know, makes the customer come to us and stick to us? 
So if you look at it, I think, uh, see, our services are fairly standardized by us in the form of protocols. I think one big thing that we spend most of our time is we just don't bring any machine or any service and just put it into market. There's a proper protocol which leads to safety, uh, which we actually create. There are certain steps that are proprietary to Kaya. There are about 600 services that we have curated using our uh, you know, mix and match based on customization for each individual customer. More than that, I think also we are not talking about a bandwidth of 8-10 doctors like some of these companies that you mentioned. We have more than 113 doctors today across the country. All those doctors have been trained by Kaya, upskilled by Kaya, so that there is a level of standardization of services across the country that we do. So safety, uh, proper SOPs, uh, standardized doctors, standardized machines, not buying any machines which are not FDA compliant, safety compliant, uh, ensuring the fact that that actually happens and constantly innovating new services. I think we also have an NSD team which is uh, a skill, you know, services development team which is there uh, headed by a doctor um, and we create new services every financial year. So that's the bit. And the last but not the least, we also have a good range of products of our own. Uh, now uh, right. more than 70 products which we are largely skin care, hair care, body at the same time now adding nutraceuticals. So right. I, I think we create a more holistic offering uh, in comparison to some of our competitors. Right, right, right. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Our next question is from the line of Krishna S. An individual investor, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. So, uh, so my question is that uh, this, uh, with respect to EBITDA, prop, we had uh, we have spoken about the EBITDA prop level profitability. So after that, like you know, what is the target profitability uh, that we are looking at? That is even after the EBITDA, like uh, do we want to like you know are, are we having a figure in mind where you know we want to make profit uh, absolutely like? And by what time, like, you know, have we, do we have any timeline for getting back into the green? That is uh, the first question. So look, uh, we, uh, we can't uh, indicate uh, forward-looking statements uh, at this call, but uh, we have shared uh, our plans on uh, expansion, uh, which will help us grow the business faster. Um, uh, relocations, which are giving us double-digit uh, growth. And uh, the existing clinics, which are on positive growth trajectory, which we have seen is about, you know, 5 to 8% percent, uh, percent growth. So I think that a combination of all these three items and the strategy on body, the strategy on hair care, which is having uh, higher than normal growth, the body grew 25%, hair grew 14%, will uh, lead us, uh, will get us economies of scale. And uh, and uh, and then eventually uh, into a higher profitability. Yes, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, that answers the question. And uh, just one more question: that uh, this uh, this Middle East business. Uh, so you said that you are waiting for approval from the Middle East uh, authorities. So typically, of course, uh, it is like again a little bit of future looking. But uh, is there any like you know uh, uh, is there any standard uh, time limits within which it can be uh, you know, this can be completed or like it's case to case basis? So look, our LGD business has already been completed, which is majority of uh, the exit has been done. Uh, the DMCC, which is about 10 to 20 percent of uh, what is left, we are expecting it by end of uh, quarter two. Okay. Thank you very much. That answers my question. All the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Our next question is from the line of Swedjen from Whitestone Financial Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, sorry, just a follow-up. So you had mentioned about rights issue. So just wanted to understand uh, uh, the promoters would be infusing money, right, through rights. And what is the quantum that we're looking for the rights issue, sir? So, the, so, so what we have disclosed in the last press release was that it's up to 300 crores. So... That's what the number okay. is. And the promoters will be subscribing for it immediately. So that it's committed to subscribe. Promoter, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. So that helps a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Uh, 
Our next question is from the line of Pratik Giri from Shublap Research. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, th thanks for the follow-up. Uh, Mr. Nair, I just wanted to you know, uh, get some rough sense uh, that uh, uh, while doing uh, the beachcombing of uh, the product, the potential of the product revenue, you know, I understand that uh, you know, uh, it, is, it will be difficult for you to give me a number. Uh, but I just want to understand on the current revenue basis, you know, uh, roughly 220 odd crores uh, for the company. Uh, what mix do we see, say, three years, four years down the line in terms of services and products, uh, you know, from Kaya products? Yeah, again, I can't give you a forecast on the future. Currently, it's about 14% of our revenue. Uh, and yeah. the focus now is going to be predominantly in the clinics uh, and, uh, at, you know, in terms of the external market, which is e-commerce as well as um, as well as the GPMT market, uh, as I think Mr. Suri mentioned earlier, uh, there is going to be a lot of uh, action on the Marico front, which may help us uh, in terms of pushing product sales in our clinic as well. So, so with brand visibility increasing, the mix will increase but we don't know exactly where it goes right now and we can't give you a forward forecast on that at the moment. Understood, understood. Uh, Mr. Nair, uh, the new product uh, development initiatives, so the NPD will also be with Marico only or that will be with us? Aya will create, uh, continue to create its uh, dermatology-backed uh, product uh, NPD. So that's something that we'll continue to do. So there is a team that is there within the business which is looking yes. at new product development. So obviously we'll continue to have an in-house setup for R&D. Okay, so NPD is going to remain with Kaya Limited and uh, the marketing and sales will be with uh, Medico. Yeah, all products sold in Kaya will be NPD done through Kaya itself. Okay, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now end the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you all for uh, participating on the call. And we appreciate the time you took to attend our investor call. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Dolat Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your